Gyome Himejima is a wonder in the world of Demon Slayer. The Stone Hashira, and quite possibly the strongest Demon Slayer during the events of the story, Gyome had humble beginnings. A tragic event in his life led to him joining the Demon Slayer Corps, and as he was blessed with great physical strength, he quickly rose to become a Hashira. What made Gyome so remarkable was not just his strength, but his quirks, such as his tendency to repeat his actions. He was blind, which should have been a handicap, but his quirks and enhanced perceptions allowed him to overcome any obstacle. He acquired he his power not as a result of the pursuit of strength, but due to his sensitive personality. In this video, we'll explain the details of Gyome's life and powers, explaining what exactly makes him so strong and his journey within the story. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Origins of Gyome How a Tragedy Brought Him Face to Face with the Leader of the Demon Slayer Corps we never really get to see Gyome with his real biological family. When we do see him, we meet him as a blind, scrawny, late teenager living in a temple on Mount Hinode, which was notorious for being a hub of demon attacks. He lived with nine orphans and was their caretaker. They were poor but happy. They even bonded over the concept of having a found family, as they loved each other like they were a real family despite lacking biological ties. Gyome would spend his days working hard to feed the orphan children, but in the process, he himself would eat much less, which led to him acquiring a scrawny physique and weak stature. He would burn wisteria incense at night to keep demons away. One day, one of the orphan kids crossed the borders of the temple and was intercepted by a demon. To save his own tail, he baited the demon into attacking the temple and put out Gyome's wisteria incense. This kid was Kai Gaku, who later became a disciple of the former Thunder Hashira alongside Zenitsu and went on to become a demon once again to save himself when he met Kokushibo. Back to Gyome's story, however, Kai Gaku got the demon into the temple where he killed four of the children. As a result, Gyome asked the remaining kids to stay back. However, barring the youngest child, Seo, the rest ignored his orders and instead ran away, as they believed they couldn't rely on a blind man and they were subsequently taken out by the demon. The demon eventually came to Gyome and Seo, but to protect the little girl, Gyome fought the demon with all his might and realized that he possessed a tremendous amount of power. Although he disliked having to be violent towards another living being, he persevered for the sake of Seo. He continued beating the demon's head until sunrise, following which, it was incinerated. When news of the incident reached civilization, a misunderstanding turned Gyome's life upside down. Seo had claimed that the man was a monster who had killed everyone, but she was referring to the demon, not Gyome. Yet, people believed that it was Gyome's fault, as the demon had completely disappeared and Gyome was unaware of the proceedings due to his lack of vision, taking away any chance of visual evidence, barring a little kid who had her head messed up due to the chaos. Gyome was charged with murdering seven of the orphan children and imprisoned. He had wished for Seo to show her thankfulness to him, but tried to reason how she might have perceived the situation wrongly due to the chaos and her tender age. He was put on death row for his false crimes, but was released following the intervention of Kagaya Ubuyashiki. The incident with the demon had allowed Gyome to understand that his power could be used for a good cause, and he became a demon slayer. In only two months, a record amount of time, he became the Stone Hashira. What makes the Stone Hashira so powerful? During the events of Demon Slayer, Gyome was considered to be the most powerful out of all the Hashiras despite the fact that he was blind. Even the upper rank one, Kokushibo, attested to his strength by claiming that he had never met a Demon Slayer of Gyome's caliber in the last 300 years. It is his innate brute strength that makes him so formidable, which is only amplified by his stone breathing technique. His physical strength is the greatest among all members of the Demon Slayer core, and he has been shown to move boulders several times his size through a town with ease. After training as a demon slayer, he acquired a well-built muscular body and, despite his newfound bigger frame, he boasted dramatic speed and reflexes, acquiring the reputation for being the third fastest member among all the Hashira. This later allowed him to keep up with not just Kokushibo, but also Muzon during the final battle. But more than his base strength and speed, what really sets Gyome apart is his endurance, owned from sitting and meditating under a waterfall. For this reason, his training regime during the Hashira training arc focused not just on evolving strength in the limbs, but also in increasing the endurance of the lower-ranking demon slayers. During this time, he boasted his ability to stand on ground that was still on fire, all while carrying two huge logs and four large rocks. His waterfall training seemed to be tremendously difficult for several 
several demon slayers, despite being something that was a cakewalk to him. But most importantly, the exercise of pushing a gigantic boulder through a town was something most failed to achieve, except for the main cast, of course, and the severity of the task also caused Tanjiro's demon slayer mark to grow. And yet, it was something Gyome could do with ease. Gyome also had a tendency to partake in repetitive actions, and this is precisely why Gyome could fight so well despite being blind. The technique of using repetitive actions allowed a user of total concentration breathing to open all five of their senses as they repeated a set of predetermined movements. This is why we always see Gyome praying with his beads and remembering moments where he experienced a lot of anger or pain, which often leads to him crying or becoming enraged. Both emotions result in his heart rate and temperature rising, ticking the boxes for the physical state a demon slayer needs to increase their strength and eventually awaken their demon slayer mark. Using a combination of total concentration breathing, constant and repetitive action allows the user, in this case Gyome, to maintain their demon slayer mark for a prolonged time since sun breathers and kokushibo aside, no one can retain it permanently. In conclusion, it can allow one to rival the power levels of the upper ranks among Muzan's 12 demon moons. It also allows Gyome to sustain his heightened power in battle without experiencing fatigue, contributing to his terrific endurance. The best example of his endurance was definitely displayed during the Infinity Castle arc in the Sunrise Countdown arc, where Gyome took part in a generational battle against against Kokushibo and then went on to help fight Muzan Kibitsuji despite receiving several severe injuries. Gyome's unique choice of weapon that makes him the only demon slayer who's not a swordsman. While Hashiras and demon slayers in general are seen using swords, Gyome is a bit different as he wields a large weapon known as the Kusarigama. This traditional Japanese weapon consists of a heavy iron weight and scythe, both connected to one another with a metal chain. The metal weight in Gyome's Kusarigama is not only spiked, but several times larger than what it should normally be for the weapon, as seen in reality and across other anime. This is a testament to Gyome's physical strength as it is the very thing that allows the stone Hashira to lift and wield such a heavy weapon with ease and expertise. The act of using this weapon in combat is known as Kusari Gama Jutsu. Similar to how the act of using a sword in battle, which is broadly known as a Ken in Japanese, is called Kenjutsu. But demons cannot be killed without the usage of a Nichiren blade, hence why the katanas or swords of all demon slayers are forged using that specific metal. In Gyome's case, his Kusari Gama uses the same steel as Nichiren blades. In fact, the iron used in his weapon is even considered superior to the iron used to forge swords in the Sengoku period, which was when the art of being a swordsmith was at its peak. Even Kokushibo, with his moon breathing and his blood demon art crescent blades, couldn't cut through Gyome's weapon. This raises the question, why does Gyome use the Kusarigama instead of a sword? The thing is, Gyome's blindness can be a handicap. It isn't though, and that's because of how Gyome counters it with his breathing techniques and repetitive actions. When it comes to using weapons, the Kusarigama has to be flailed around, allowing the chain to rattle and create vibrations. It's not unnatural for demon slayers to possess extrasensory perception, and it is often a necessary ability to have. As the strongest Hashira of the present day, it's only normal for Gyome to possess extrasensory perception, which in turn is heightened by him not having vision. This allows him to hear the vibrations of the chain, allowing Gyome to get a good grasp of the space he's in and the movements of his allies and opponents around him. The Art of Stone Breathing We can't talk about a demon slayer, let alone a Hashira, without addressing their breathing technique. Each Hashira we see in the show has a distinct breathing style, and for Gyome Himejima, it's stone breathing. This technique is one of the five fundamental breathing styles alongside flame, wind, thunder, and water and directly originates from sun breathing. We don't know how Gyome learned stone breathing. He might have mastered it himself. He's the only Hashira to use this technique in the story, and that, by extension, makes him the most powerful stone breather of his generation. It works alongside his superhuman hearing and innate physical strength. In his battle against Kokushibo, this is what allowed him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the 500-year-old demon who had honed his skills for over five centuries. Each breathing technique has various forms, and we see Gyome use five of them, starting with first form, Serpentinite, bipolar, Yome throws the iron ball and scythe towards his target, keeping the weapon pivoted to him as he holds the chain to rotate the attached weights. This causes the scythe and the iron ball to move in a circular pattern, drilling and grinding through the stone Hashira's opponents. Second form, Upper Smash, witnesses him throw the scythe and weight for a pincer move, following which he smashes down on the chain. This causes the iron ball to rebound and smash the user's opponent from a longer distance. Third form, Stone Skin, has Gyome slashing consecutively with his scythe to deflect the attacks coming at him, making it a more defensive move than the first two forms. Fourth form, Volcanic Rock Rapid Conquest, as the name suggests, is once again an offensive move. The chain of the Kusarigama is swung on both sides to take out the target, making it a wide-ranged attack. 
Fifth form, Arcs of Justice, is the most powerful out of all forms, as the user creates a powerful barrage with the weapons attached to the Kusari Gama and deals heavy damage to the opponent. It operates by the scythe hitting the target first from one side, while the iron ball attacks from the opposite end. Both weapons slam into the target at the same time. Gyome's Special Abilities Enhanced Hearing, Awakening the Demon Slayer Mark, and Seeing the Transparent World as a Blind Man Several Demon Slayers and Demons possess one extra sensory perception or another. For example, Tanjiro has an acute sense of smell, Akaza can sense the fighting spirit of others, and so on and so forth. Similarly, Gyome possesses enhanced hearing, which is on brand for him as he is blind. When one sense is cut off, the others are heightened. For those who cannot see, the sense that is the most likely to be heightened is hearing. Although Gyome is not the only character with enhanced hearing, considering Zenitsu has the same ability, it would be safe to say that Gyome's status as the strongest Tashira and a blind man makes his hearing far superior. His acute hearing allows him to navigate life as normally as the average person who can see. He can even engage in high-speed combat against ridiculously powerful demons. Naturally, deducing the position of his surroundings and opponents using the rattling of his weapon's chain is light work for him. He can even tell when another person is lying, as he can sense the slight changes in the sounds produced by a person's body while telling a lie, making him something of a human lie detector. His most impressive hearing feat would definitely be against Muzon, as Gyome was able to hear the Demon King's flesh regenerating. Not only that, but he could also tell how Muzon's regeneration was unlike any demon he'd ever fought before. But great extrasensory perception is just the stepping stone for something far greater, but that greatness can only be attained after a Demon Slayer awakens their mark. A curse associated with the manifestation of the mark states that a person who acquires such a mark cannot live past the age of 25. However, by the time Gyome does awaken the mark, he's already 27. He'd awakened his mark prior to the Infinity Castle arc, but hadn't used it in battle yet until he fought the upper rank one. The mark manifested as cracked earth fissure patterns on his forearms. Needless to say, it amplified his already phenomenal physical stats such as strength, endurance, speed, and stamina. The second step of awakening the mark is turning the Nichiren sword bright red. Gyome does not use a sword, but he fought Kokushibo alongside Genya, Muichiro, and Sanemi. Prior to the final attack that beheaded Kokushibo, Sanemi, the Wind Hishira, struck Gyome's weapon's spiked iron ball with his sword, and both the weight and Sonami's weapon turned bright red for a while, which allowed the stone and the wind to Shira to behead the upper rank one. Gyome achieved the bright red Nichiren once again during the final battle against Muzan when he struck the weapons on his Kusari Gama together to turn them bright red. With all the conditions met, Gyome is able to tap into his selfless state, where all of his senses, including his emotions, are closed off, allowing him to access the transparent world where he can see through living things. The transparent world is not a realistic manifestation of the physical world, so Gyome does not need to externally see it, which would have become an issue with his lack of vision. Instead, the transparent world actually exists in the mind allowing Gyome to see through his opponents despite his ocular handicap. With this, he can predict his target's movements and sense them naturally. As he uses this against an immobilized Kokushibo, he is eventually able to behead the demon. How Gyome's sensitive personality plays a role in his reputation as the strongest. The Hashiras are presented with several personalities in unique colors. We see the ecstatic, upbeat, and lovesick Love Hashira, the introverted Water Hashira, the aggressive Wind Hashira, and so on and so forth. However, the stereotype of the greatest being humble and quiet instead of boastful and having larger-than-life personality traits continues to ring true with Gyome embodying the archetype of the gentle giant. He's emotional, empathic, sensitive, and soft-spoken, a stark contrast to his large and intimidating build and reputation as the strongest demon slayer of the modern era. He often relives his most painful memories, which would probably revolve around the death of the kids at his orphanage, the false accusations he dealt with, the death of Kane Kocho, Ube Ashiki awaiting an early death, and all the tragedies the demons have caused. This often leads to the stone Hashira shedding tears in public, but he doesn't shy away from showing his emotions. His sensitivity is part of his strength, as it's done for the sake of him repeating his actions, which is partially responsible for making him so ridiculously powerful. At some point, Shinobu Kocho stated how every time Gyome stepped into battle, everyone felt like they were at ease. He's also greatly trusted by Kagaya Ubuyashiki, who had told the Stone Hashira about his plan to sacrifice himself in order to land a devastating blow on Muzan. While the other Hashiras were shocked at such a sacrifice, Gyome was well aware of it. He even had the final say among all the Hashiras during meetings and was greatly respected by everyone. Despite his kind and respectable disposition and his sympathy for humanity for suffering under the threat of demons, Yome was not someone 
who could trust easily. More specifically, he didn't trust those younger than him, which is not a character trait that is normally expected from a man known for his sensitivity, but that's what makes his character so special. Due to his experience at the temple with Kai Gaku ratting out the other kids to the demon, Gyome believed the kids would do anything, right or wrong, if given the opportunity to do so. Whether they did so or not was different, but in his opinion, they were always capable of it. This is why he was initially suspicious of Kagaya, who, despite his maturity, was only 14 years old when he saved Gyome from capital punishment. However, once he begins to trust the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps, he offers his utmost loyalty and unwavering commitment to him. Like most other Demon Slayers, Gyome understands the value of mortality and being human. His stellar physical attributes lead to Kokushibo extending an offer to become a demon so that he can live longer and hone his skills without fear of death or aging. However, Gyome rejects the proposal, as for him, being a Demon Slayer requires one to commit to the fact that tomorrow is never guaranteed. As a story that heavily focuses on the art of swordsmanship, with its power system being developed during the Sengoku period, we see aspects of Bushido, or the Samurai's Code, trickle down into the characters. It was of great importance for Samurais to stay honorable until death. They would even commit seppuku, or ritualistic suicide, dying by their own hands before falling into the enemy's hands. And of course, it was more honorable to die than to live in dishonor. We see a similar philosophy employed by the characters of Demon Slayer, more specifically by the Hashiras, such as Gyome or the Flame Hashira Rengoku, who did not wish to dishonor themselves by turning into demons for selfish reasons. Gyome took great offense from Kokushibo's demon offer because he wished to preserve his dignity until death. He was proven to be correct following the decapitation of the upper rank one, who could not accept his natural death as a human or a demon. He attained a monstrous form by the end, the sight of which became his downfall. As a human, he used to wish to be an honorable samurai, but gave up his sense of honor to revive his brother as he became a demon. In his final moments, when Kokushibo saw his monstrous form, he realized how pathetic and horrific he had become, proving the loss of his dignity as he had given away what made him human. Meanwhile, it was of great importance for Gyome to live and die as a human, and he believed that with resolution as half-hearted as Kokushibo's, one would never be able to become a Hashira. As the term actually translates into pillar in English, as it signifies how the Hashiras are the pillars in humanity's battle against demon kind. The Trajectory of Gyome's Life After Becoming a Demon Slayer we already know how Gyome Himejima joined the Demon Slayer Corps and became a Hashira, but there's a lot more to his story. As part of his mission, he was responsible for slaying the demon who had killed the parents of Shinobu and Kane Kocho, with the former eventually becoming the insect Hashira herself. Back then, however, the two sisters lived with the stone Hashira for several days after being orphaned, with Gyome already being quite adept at nursing orphans. The girls even wanted to learn how to slay demons from the Hashira, but despite his tremendous strength and skill with violence, Gyome was not the type of person who seemed to be fond of it. He did it because he was good at it, but unlike Sanami, he was not an inherently violent person. Naturally, he refused to teach the sisters how to fight demons, but they eventually managed to convince him in some regard. This led to Gyome assigning his boulder exercise to the siblings, and once they were able to push it through a town, they were introduced to breathing style cultivators, which is how Shinobu ended up with the insect breathing style, while Kane mastered its parent technique, flower breathing. The Rehabilitation Training Arc Within the events of Demon Slayer, however, Gyome was first seen after the Mount Natagumo arc when a passed out Tanjiro finally awoke. He gets a more prominent appearance soon after in the Rehabilitation Training Arc, which involves the Hashiras discussing what they should do with Tanjiro due to his connection with Nezuko, and his desire to keep her alive despite her status as a demon. While this moment is mostly infamous for Saname's antics in trying to force Nezuko into attacking, Gyome did pass some backhanded comments towards the main cast implying Nezuko to be a second-rate being as she was a demon and thinking that her birth was a pity. When he witnessed how determined Tanjiro was to save her, he even went on to say that Tanjiro's determination was a pity and that he should be killed so that he doesn't have to continue suffering in this life trying to turn his demonic sister back into a human. When Oyakata and Kagaya Ubuyashiki expressed their approval for Tanjiro and Nezuko, Gyome was still reluctant to accept the unusual situation despite his loyalty to the Ubeyashikis, partly because it was normal to distrust demons, and partly because Gyome was generally distrustful towards those who were younger than him. The Mujin Train Arc Gyome plays an extremely minor role in this arc, as he is shown only after he receives the news of the Flame Hashira's death. He is visibly saddened by the situation, and offers a prayer to the fallen Hashira as he cries. 
The Hashira Training Arc. The character becomes more relevant as the final arcs of Demon Slayer roll in, allowing the top players to become more important. He was part of the procession where Muichiro concluded how a heart rate of 200 beats per minute and a temperature of 39 degrees Celsius was what led to the manifestation of his Demon Slayer mark. This led to a training session being introduced where each Hashira would train themselves and other Demon Slayers to ensure that everyone could and would manifest the mark before the final battle against the remaining upper ranks and Muzan Kibitsuji. With Gyome being the strongest, his training session was the last among the rounds and focused on strengthening the limbs and pushing the strength and endurance of a demon slayer to its limits via the waterfall and boulder exercises. The trainees were made to meditate under a huge waterfall as Gyome wished for them to strengthen the body's core. They even had to carry three massive logs on their shoulders before pushing a huge boulder across town. The boulder's exercise was where most people began to fail, with Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Zenitsu continuing to fail at it for a substantial substantial amount of time. Yet, Tanjiro spotted Gyome pushing a much larger boulder with ease. When he learned from Genya how the Stone Hashira repeated chants and how such repetitive actions maximized his focus and helped him to perform superhuman tasks. During this arc, Gyome also ends up accepting Tanjiro despite previously being reluctant to do so due to Nezuko being a demon. He does this precisely because back in Swordsmith Village, Tanjiro had prioritized saving the villagers over his sister, an action that was worthy of a demon slayer. As a result, the Stone Hashira went on to reveal his heartbreaking backstory to Tanjiro. Infinity Castle Arc versus Kokushibo. The arc kicked off with Kagaya Ubuyashiki's sacrifice to weaken Muzan, which Gyome knew about, making him the only Hashira who had information about what was going on. As Lady Tameo's poison was then injected into Muzan, Gyome beheaded the Demon King. However, Muzan began to regenerate his head as the only thing he was vulnerable to was sunlight. He unleashed his blood demon art, Black Blood Brambles, to attack Gyome, who countered with stone breathing third form Stone King to defend himself, but within a split second, he was transported to the ever-changing Infinity Castle. Once inside the castle, he found himself fighting weaker demons alongside Muichiro Tokido, or the Mist Hashira, and revealed to his peer Kagaya Ubuyashiki's plan to use himself as a decoy in the final battle, as he was destined to die soon anyways due to his failing health. The next step in Gyome's journey went on to be one of the greatest moments of his life, because the Infinity Castle could transport people and change its structure due to the blood demon art of the upper rank 4, Nakamura. Muichiro was transported into the same room as Kokushibo. Soon after, Genya joined the battle and was followed by his elder brother Sanami, or the Wind Hashira. The battle continued for a while, but before Kokushibo could land his final blow on Sanami, Gyome joined the party, and that became the ray of hope as his presence created a chance for the upper rank one to be taken out. It took little time for Kokushibo to recognize Gyome's exceptional strength. Gyome eventually revealed to have already awakened his Demon Slayer mark, which he was saving for the final fight against Muzan. However, due to Kokushibo's tremendous strength, he ended up displaying his trump card in this battle instead. The upper rank one went on to explain how the mark took the lives of its bearer by the time they turned 25, and since Gyome was already 27, he was predestined to die by the end of the night. To save the stone Hashira from the fate of dying, Kokushibo offered Gyome the chance to become a demon. As it stands, several demons really hated the idea of powerful demon slayers losing their skills due to death or aging. However, Gyome rejected this idea for obvious reasons, as he was a truly honorable man. And he even countered with the exception who had managed to live a long life despite being born with a demon slayer mark, the brother of Kokushibo, and the one to create sun-breathing style, Yoriichi Sugikuni. Kokushibo was taken aback as his entire being revolved around surpassing, or at least rising his brother, which provoked him to attack Gyome angrily. Soon, the Stone Hashira found support amidst battle from Sanami, who had awakened his mark as well. As Kokoshibo kept overpowering them, Gyome and Sanami had to go all out just to defend themselves and avoid the attacks of the upper rank one. Muichiro joined the party, and eventually Genya went on to eat a piece of Kokoshibo's flesh sword to gain demonic abilities. The alliance launched a combination attack on the demon, with Gyome severing its right arm. Kokoshibo was further immobilized by Muichiro stabbing his torso and Genya using his bullets after being empowered by Kokushibo's sword. The bullets penetrated into the demon and burst out into vampiric trees, locking the upper rank one in a single spot. However, Kokushibo went on to sprout blades from his body, which mortally wounded Genya and Muichiro, while Gyome and Sanami were severely injured but not fatally. Another combination attack by the Alliance led to Gyome landing a blow on the upper rank one's head with his weighted iron ball, aided by Sanami and Muichiro's swords and Genya causing another 
their tree to sprout. The weapons then began to turn red, and they beheaded the demon. However, Kokushibo ended up regrowing his head, but fell prey to his own identity crisis as he turned into a monster. As he pondered over his thoughts, Gyome caught him off guard and smashed his head once again. This time, when Kokushibo tried to regrow his head, his body and flesh gave way, and he ended up disintegrating anyways. Sunrise Countdown Arc versus Muzan and Final Moments. Back at the city with the major players of the 12 Demon Moons taken out, the Demon Slayers, including Gyome, united to stall Muzan until sunrise, giving them an hour and a half of time to stay in battle. Muzan furiously used the appendages sprouting out of his body to attack the Hashiras, who held him in battle but were surprised to see how instantaneous Muzan's regeneration was. However, the Demon Slayers with awakened marks such as Gyome proved to be resistant to the effects of Muzan's demonic blood. The Demon King then almost landed a killing blow on Mitsuri, but she was saved by Gyome. Despite such efforts, Muzan continued to be too powerful, even for the Hashiras. The battle revealed how every slash left with a red blade resulted in delayed regeneration. Zenitsu and Kanao provided aid to the Hashiras by turning invisible using Yushiro's technique, who was the demon that Lady Tameo had created. This gave Gyome the opportunity to use his Kusarigama against Muzan. As he swung his weapon round to create heat and friction, Gyome was able to land a blow that smashed the left side of Muzan's torso. Eventually, the Demon Slayers went on to use Yushiro's papers that allowed one person to see what the other was seeing using papers on their forehead, kind of like the Six Paths of Pain, which helped them in launching a combined and relentless attack against Muzan. Around this time, Gyome realized that the Demon King had an unnatural biology as he possessed several of the same organs, which he was probably able to deduce due to his access to the transparent world. He then stated how all twelve of his vital organs had to be attacked simultaneously for the Demon King to suffer significant damage. However, Muzan went on to display another technique which caused the Demon Slayers to crash into nearby buildings, ultimately mutilating Gyome's left leg. Although the Stone Hashira did not die immediately from losing a leg, he eventually succumbed to his injuries due to blood loss following the end of Muzan, who, after the Hashiras put him out of commission, was taken out by Tanjiro's sunbreathing and Hinokami Kagura. As Gyome took his final breaths, he imagined himself being surrounded by the spirits of the foster children from his temple and found peace, unfortunately attesting to Kokushibo's prediction that his awakening of the Demon Slayer mark after the age of 25 would lead to his death not long after. Marvelous Verdict Gyome Himajima being the stone Hashira was so on brand for him because he was the rock in the lives of the orphans he had raised and later went on to become a rock for the other Hashiras and even Kagaya Ubuyashiki to rely on. He may have had his moments of glory, but it wouldn't be wrong to say that his life was always ridden by one tragedy or another. Even after he became a demon slayer, he continued to relive his painful memories and lived in a world where his strength, although remarkable, was still not enough to keep people safe from demons for the longest time. However, the final battle may have been lost without Gyome, as it would have been nearly impossible to take out Kokushibo and stall Muzan long enough for Tanjiro to step in with his Hinokami Kagura. With this thought, today's video comes to an end. What are your thoughts on Gyome? What's your favorite Stone Hashira? a moment. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and until next time, see you around and have a marvelous day.